Is this already season seven of Fix or Flop? And you've stuck around for this long? What a champ. A very warm welcome back to the show where we attempt to fix broken gaming PCs in and around the Orlando, Florida area free of charge. You guys know the routine by this point. If you have a broken system and you'd like a chance to have it fixed for free in a video like this, be sure to submit a form linked in this video's description. Now on to this thing, which uh, has some odd Touches. This one's actually owned by a friend in the automotive space. Speaking of, we have a new channel, Salazar's Cars, where you can watch us rebuild currently a crash-damaged Nissan GTR. That should be pretty fun. Hop on over there. It's going to be linked in the description as well. Enough with the call-outs. He told me that this system has a problem with boot looping. And I can confirm, I've already seen it with my own eyes since he brought this to the shop where we were installing some ubiquity stuff, that it does in fact reset a lot and doesn't want to load even into the BIOS. That's it's a big problem. The graphics card is a trusty RTX 3060, and as for the CPU, something a bit older, 8th gen Intel. Not sure on the specific chip, forgot to ask, but uh, yeah, this is an oldie but goodie. And since I'm sure you're dying to know, I asked the owner what this was. He said he was young and dumb. That was, that was literally the description he gave. I think it's just some white paint. He wanted to sort of spice up the look a bit. Uh, yeah, to each his or her own. It's honestly super cool to see older systems like this still in use today, or at least this one would be if it wasn't, again, boot looping. One problem with older rigs, though, is that if you have to replace anything platform side, it typically involves either a used component because they don't manufacture new stuff anymore, or just an outright platform upgrade, which is not cheap either. And I don't have any of this stuff on hand. What's it gonna take to get this one back up and running then? I'm not entirely sure, but I hope you'll stick around to find out. Stay with me. The new Antec Flux Rear is an impressive take on a mid-tower with optimized hardware placement for maximum airflow and styling. Take, for instance, this full mesh front panel and premium wood accent, or this tempered glass side panel. This patented platform is accompanied by five high-performance PWM fans, three of which are also ARGB capable for multi-directional airflow from below, the side, the top, and the front, with even reverse blade units atop the basement for a sleek and stealthy look, a function achieved thanks to the relocation of the power supply, a clever tweak that even helps with cable management. The Flux Rear also includes support for up to 360mm AIOs, back connect motherboards, and oversized graphics cards. This mid-tower has it all, and you can learn more about it by clicking the sponsor link below. Let's jump right to it then. In one continuous rolling clip, I want you to be on the same page as me, and that means you need to see the symptom. So, we're going to power this on, and I'm going to demonstrate the boot looping problem. Now I've got a monitor connected, but again, it doesn't post. It doesn't load into the BIOS or anything. I attempt to, to load into an operating system, uh, but I am connecting one just to prove that it's not an issue with a display source either being connected or not. This happens whether a monitor is connected to the graphics card via HDMI or display port. So it doesn't seem to be at least output dependent. And we do have a Dr. Debug LED at the bottom. That might come in handy here, but you see it cycles through quite a number of, of different codes before randomly shutting off completely and then rebooting, at which point the process just continues to loop over and over. So there we go. That shut off. And now it fires back up again. It's almost like someone's pushing the reset button over and over. And this was not happening only a couple of weeks ago. The owner actually brought this to me with a different issue. It was having trouble I guess just like shutting off randomly or, or blue screening in games, which I was a bit hesitant to look at because uh, those things can be difficult to diagnose if they are difficult to replicate. But then all of a sudden, after bringing it to the shop where I picked it up, it started boot looping. So just, I guess, <laughs> perfect timing in the sense that I could now diagnose something much easier in a sense, but uh, it is unfortunate that the symptom appears to have worsened. So yeah, again, shuts off and then it will start back up right now. And no signal the entire time. We do have a set of debug LEDs above Dr. Debug, which is also nice, but it doesn't appear to want to move past the DRAM LED, which is currently illuminated. You'll see it cycles back to CPU on the top left very quickly, and then right back to DRAM, and that's where it'll stay over and over again. It won't progress any further than this, so it's possible we're looking at either a DRAM issue specifically, or something on the CPU memory controller side, it's difficult to tell so far. I'm gonna quickly reset CMOS just to be on the safe side here. With the power off, we're gonna jump these two pins for about 10 to 20 seconds. But it appears that has done nothing. And actually, now that I've watched this reset a few more times, 
it actually looks like the system is resetting multiple times before fully powering off and then back on again. I can hear the fan spool up very quickly and then ramp back down multiple times through each boot up process. So it's definitely getting hung up on something around the CPU or the DRAM. I don't think this is power supply related, though we can run it through our tester just to be sure. If you look closely, you'll notice we do have both of our Trident ZRGB dims illuminated, so they are receiving power, and yes, they are fully slotted into this board, but if you look even closer, there's actually a second pair of dims, much cheaper, in between them. The easy thing to do here would just be to completely remove all four dims and try a single known working stick from my stash. But I understand that not everyone has just an extra kit of DDR4 or 5 laying around for troubleshooting. So I'm going to pursue this as though I didn't have anything extra on hand. I wanna do something that I have actually advocated for a few times in recent Fix or Flop episodes, trying to boot with no dims attached at all and then monitoring those symptoms. If all you get is a hang where the DRAM light is illuminated it whole time and you don't get any further, of course you're not gonna get a post, then that tells me that we likely are being hung up on something after the CPU and maybe even after DRAM itself. But if we get the exact same symptom as before where it just continuously boot loops, then it's not getting far enough into the post process to even confirm if DRAM exists, which means it's probably a CPU issue. So in this case, no pun intended, the CPU is one of the first things to be checked during a post process. And we can use this order of operations to again, sort of rule out things that we might suspect are the cause. The CPU and the resulting firmware are the first things to be checked. So if you don't have the proper BIOS installed to communicate with said chip, that's gonna throw a red flag right away. DRAM is one of the next things to be checked, followed by video output source and then peripherals, USB hardware and things like that, other PCIe devices. Uh, so if the same symptom occurs after all of our DRAM has been removed, then we likely have a CPU or BIOS related issue. Oh, and would you look at that? I couldn't tell earlier, but we're actually running three different kits of DDR4 in the system. So of course, Trident ZRGBs, I'm actually gonna confirm quickly that both of these are from the same kit. Sometimes that can throw issues as well. Oh, okay, great. One of these doesn't even have a sticker on it. Fantastic. This one though is a DDR4 3200 CL 16 18 18 38 stick. We also have two additional dims from two different kits and uh, yeah, it's just generally not a good idea to do this. It's not impossible, but it can cause several problems. Now let's see what happens with no DRAM installed. Okay, that reset a lot faster than before. We're just gonna keep it rolling here, one continuous clip. Yeah, I don't think it likes the fact that no DRAM is installed. I guess that's not a surprise, but it doesn't appear to be boot looping anymore. It is powering off, but it, it's not doing the same like intermittent power cycling like we were seeing before, where the fan would spool up quickly and then chill out, spool up quickly, chill out. And it would do that three or four times before hard powering off like it is in this instance. So it's interesting, that's disappeared now. I wonder. Uh, you know, I would be I would be willing to bet that throwing in a known working kit of DDR4 will fix this problem. The symptom has disappeared by removing all four of these. So let's see what happens when we throw in an identical kit of Trident Z DDR4, but this time a known matching pair and that's it. If this works, it would be a pretty cool and simple fix. I'm just not totally Sure yet, again, our uh, no DDR4 test doesn't really rule anything out. It just kind of gives us a sanity check before we potentially spend more money on a replacement kit. I think that is fully locked in. Alrighty, here we go. Once again, powering on. What's gonna happen? So it's not power cycling anymore. The fans are pretty constant. Ooh, it's actually, they've ramped down even more. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> okay. So uh, our little no DRAM test actually did kind of in a way quell our concerns about it being anything else. The symptom disappeared and we now have a post with a replacement kit. Now I'm fairly certain that his original 16 gig kit of Trident Z DDR4 is still okay. 
there's probably an issue with one of the other two dims, if I had to guess. So we're going to have to rule those out one by one. Now, in theory, all four of these dims could play together nicely. You just have to find the lowest common denominator for RAM frequency and cast latency and timings. That's what most people aren't very familiar with, and it's what would make a majority of builders uncomfortable. And so that's why I generally don't advise it. Uh, but I, I don't want to put anyone off from actually combining different sticks if you really had to. We have a video actually discussing this in great length up here. <laughs> also, I was a bit worried. Uh, 84C on your liquid temps, that would be disastrous. You'd probably have leaks galore if that were the case. But these tubes are very cool. I think this is in Fahrenheit, not Celsius. I'm just used to seeing Celsius when it comes to PC temperatures. So um, I'm pretty sure the owner has just changed this temperature readout to Fahrenheit with an NZXT cam. Now let's try with only his kit of Trident Z DDR4. These are the dims we definitely want to save if possible. So we're just gonna run these two, try for a post, and if we receive one, then we'll add each of his extra dims one by one. We'll swap them out to see which of these, if either, is causing the boot loop. Oh, and would you look at that? I'm just gonna go handheld here. Yeah, that is, uh, that's boot looping right away. Happened right as we threw both of these dims in here. So one of these actually is bad, which sucks because these are the more expensive two of his bunch. Yeah, look at that. Just hard powers off again, exact same symptoms as before. So here we go then, I suppose, proof that even a faulty dim can cause boot looping. Also just now, sort of indirectly, we have ruled out a defective or faulty memory channel. So we had our two known working Trident Z dims in slots A2 and B2, the first two that should be populated on this board, and it worked no problem. We replaced those dims with the owner's original Trident Z modules in the exact same slots, and we get the boot looping. If we had a faulty channel, then even my known working kit would have resulted in the same symptom. So I suppose that's good news. Either a defective motherboard there or a CPU would have cost more money than just a DDR4 swap. So now I'm wondering which of these dims is bad. Let's try removing the outer. Aha, would you look at that? It appears as though this dim here with the sticker is to blame for our boot looping woes. Now we're going to run through every single dim slot on the board with every remaining dim to make sure that there aren't any other issues. If you don't see that all included in this video, it means they checked out and are a-okay. I wanna physically inspect though around this suspect here to see if there are any dislodged SMDs, especially around the connector area. If this was say misaligned in the slot, one or more of those could have been popped off. It doesn't look as though any are missing, however, possibly one in the middle, but if we compare it to the other, we'll know for sure. It always helps to have a frame of reference. You can see holding these two next to each other, everything appears to be in place on both dims. If you look at it from the side, same thing. You guys can feel free to pause the video. If I miss anything, be sure to all caps it in the comments. But at first glance, these appear to be identical physically. So nothing missing on the SMD side. Oh, would you look at that? So I just uh, popped the other two dims into random slots, really. So I've got A2 and B2 populated as well as A1, which I think is the procedure for a third dim. It might be B1, but that'd be a little weird. And it is boot looping incessantly back to square one. So do we have yet again another defective dim? This one, is this gonna light up? I'm not sure if it lit up before. Let's see. So it's just rebooted. Yep, it does light up. So it is receiving some power at least, but it's not like in one of these two dims as well. That is unfortunate. And it looks like that second dim is this guy here, the cheaper of the two remaining modules. That is not much of a surprise. I'm going to quickly reset this again though. And one fell swoop, one continuous clip. So you can be on the same page as myself. We're gonna swap the two remaining dims, the two that we suspect are still working, and see what happens. So I'm going to put the known working Trident Z dim into, let's just do A1 and B1. So we're still sticking with dual channel, but obviously not the correct slots for the first two dims. It might throw a code or something and just you know, scream at us because it's a, not technically the correct config, but I just wanna see if we can get these to work in different dims as well. So let's try A1 and here B1 and see what happens. I will say these dim slots are a bit stubborn, but that is fully inserted. Here we go, power on. 
Yep, and I, I can tell you right away, just from the behavior of the system, it is going to post again, no problem. Wow, so uh, two dead dims. What are the odds? Super strange, the fact that we have two dead dims. And the uh, the owner didn't mention to me that he had you know added anything last minute here. If he had, then I mean that could very well explain why all of a sudden his system stopped working. But it seems to me, at least according to his story, it seemed to me that, that these were running in his system for a good while. So maybe just super, super coincidental timing. Either way, our best bet is to replace the entire set. Now, luckily I have four Trident ZRGB modules that are an exact match to his, only this will be a doubling essentially the capacity. So 32 gigs in total, I generally just opt for two dims in a normal build, but this is what I have for DDR4 that's still around. So that will be, I would say, a small upgrade. And of course, I'll give these back to him. These are the two working ones. We'll probably keep the other two, the ones that I suspect are dead, maybe do some future testing on them. Physically, they do both look okay, which is a little suspicious, but these two work fine. So they could be repurposed in a different build. So let's go ahead and pop them in one at a time. These are a little big, so they fit extremely snug in here. It's a little, it's a little uncomfortable for me. I think we'll be okay, but uh, yeah, the tubes from this AIO are cutting it a bit close. And here we go, the moment of truth. We're trying for one final post with a replacement kit, this time four matching dims. So we're gonna power up. It sounds good so far. But any second now, we should get that post. Come on now. Show me something. I think it was resetting itself because one of those dims was not fully seated. It is, again, awfully tight in there. Probably a little too close for comfort, but as long as it's not touched, it should be okay. Let's try this again. Sounds better now. It's not resetting. Fan curve should ramp down. Come on. That's more like it already. So yeah, interesting that this board is exhibiting the same reset symptoms when one of our dims isn't fully slotted in. Now I knew for sure that these were, of course that was one of the first things we suspected may be wrong is that one of them maybe came loose during transport when it was brought to the shop where I picked it up. Uh, so it, it could just be that maybe we have like a, a short or something, and well not this dim or, or this one, these are the two working ones, uh, actually in one of these here. We could have a short in either or both that's replicating the symptom that we just saw with the one of those dims not fully seated. But one thing is for sure, regardless of what slot these are in and how they are inserted, they don't wanna play ball with this system or any other system for that matter. I put together uh, actually another system over on the desk behind you, popped it in there very quick just to make sure. Sanity check, it's always good to check with a separate system just to be on the safe side and it still doesn't wanna work. So these dims are definitely toast. What a doozy then. Interesting, the sort of symptoms that defective DRAM modules can cause in a system. I would have thought, and actually I told the owner this, at first glance, I thought it was maybe a power supply issue. If it's cutting off after a few seconds of attempting to post, maybe there's a power delivery issue of some sort. Maybe it's a motherboard issue. Uh, but in this case here, thankfully, it was something very easy to narrow down, these DDR4 DIMMs. And with a quick swap, we are back up and running. Pretty darn close to a best case scenario, if I'm being frank, although I would say anything better than that would involve not having to swap any hardware out at all. DDR4 and DDR5 is generally very accessible and you saw even without extra dims to swap in, we were able to sort of isolate the symptom and confirm that it was not the CPU and likely not the motherboard either, which would have involved much more work. The system appears stable. It re reboots over and over into Windows. And that's really all I'm concerned with and hopefully has a lot more life left in it. These 8th gen Intel chips are honestly pretty dang reliable, and as long as it's treated with care, you should have many more years of decent entry-level gaming from this combination of hardware. 3060 is gonna start showing its age a bit on the VRM side with newer titles, but it's not the end of the world, again, especially for what you could get these cards for today. The one thing I'm going to do off camera is take this outside and give it a quick dusting. It's a bit dirty. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you have not already, leaving a like, leaving a comment, and doing all those other things that you guys usually do. The engagement is very much appreciated. Consider checking out again Salazar's Cars, our new car channel, where we're currently rebuilding a crash damaged, actually frame damaged Nissan GTR. 
that's been a doozy, and consider sticking around for the next here. My name's Greg, thanks for learning with me.